So what is the purpose of science? If you look online, you'll find a definition like, I don't know, science is the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the blah, blah, blah through experimentation. And definitions like this are not wrong, but they are talking around the issue. Science is actually more like the human species popping a Xanax. Science is designed to relieve anxiety just like the pill Xanax is. It may not feel that way when you're taking that physics test or writing that psychology research paper, but that is the purpose behind why we invented science, to make us believe that we have control over our lives. And yes, science is invented. It's a human construct designed and controlled by us. And no, no, I'm not saying that humans invented gravity, mitosis, or neural firing. Those things exist whether we study them or not. But we did invent the ways to study those things. And we call this process scientific research. Now, whenever I start talking about scientific research to my family, my friends, they get that, I don't know, walking dead, eyes glazed, bored look on their faces. I mean, in reality, I don't talk to my friends about science research. If I did, they would probably stop being my friend. But all in all, science research is kind of fun. I mean, it's not Black Friday shopping kind of fun or like fantasy football kind of fun or even like, I don't know, unicorn or rainbows kind of fun. I guess it's more like, I don't know, a, a solid Nicolas Cage flick kind of fun. Whatever, whatever. The point is that every field of science, whether it's biology, physics, sociology, or even my field of psychology, the goal of science research is the same. To explain and predict what will happen. At its core, the whole point is to explain and predict. And the big question here is why? Why do we devote so much time trying to predict what will happen? Why do you spend your limited time on this freaking planet taking coursework on how to predict events? Why do we even care? The answer lies in that three pound mesh of water and fat that we have in our heads called a brain. In particular, an area called the frontal lobe. And the frontal lobe is involved in many kinds of vital functions like problem solving, motor movement, speaking, imagination, and the ability to plan. In other words, the frontal lobe enables us to think about the future. And why is it such a big deal? Because we are the only species on this great big freaking planet that has the ability to think about the future. Professor Daniel Gilbert out of Harvard pretty much staked his career on the idea that humans are the only animals that can consciously plan ahead. How do we know if he's right? How do we really know if I can think about my next trip to Las Vegas and all the buffets that I'm going to devour while my cat Milo could only think about the food in the here and now? Well, it's tough to know for sure. If we went out there to ask some animals what they're thinking, I mean, I guess it would sound something like this. Oh, kill, 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 kill. What is there to kill? Nothing. Okay, so leap. Okay. Run, 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 run. Ooh, food, hide food, hide food. Don't know why I am hiding food. I don't understand the concept of the future. It must be a natural instinct. Oh my God. I have nothing to wear tomorrow and I have no time to shop because of the ridiculous psychology test next week. How am I going to do everything with prom just seven months away? I am so triggered. Based on these incredibly realistic dramatizations, we can now plainly see that humans are really special. We can plan ahead. And animals probably cannot. You know, on one hand, thinking about the future has been a real blessing. It has catapulted the human race to great heights because we're able to save resources today only to use them down the road tomorrow. Psychologists often call this delaying immediate gratification for future rewards. Like not eating that donut to get that great six pack for the summer. Uh, that's just not me. Or, I don't know, saving for retirement. Or that time when that really beautiful girl 
asked me to go to her party back in college, but I said no because I had that big psych test. Yeah, that even sounds like a lie. Um, yeah, I was never really invited to many parties, but now it's just getting sad. Let's, let's move on. But thinking about the future is also a tremendous burden. Much of the stress that we feel on an everyday basis is not about what is happening, but instead what could happen later. In fact, a pillar behind most anxiety disorders like panic disorder, I don't know, OCD, or even phobias is centered around the fear of not what has or what is happening, but the fear of what could happen. What will happen if I see that spider? What will happen if I touch those germs? Psychologists have been aware of this concept for decades. One example is the barbaric but once popular frontal lobotomy. By surgically removing a portion of the frontal lobe, patients with certain disorders would exhibit much less anxiety. One reason could be because they no longer had the ability to think about what's going to happen tomorrow. So they had less anxiety. There are whole philosophies and religions based on the idea of living in the present moment and not dwelling on the future. The practice of meditation itself makes millions of people around the globe feel more at peace. Why? Because trying to be in the present moment means your frontal lobe, for a brief moment, is not obsessed with the future. Now let's bring this full circle by examining this notion in terms of science. We know that not knowing the future, but constantly dwelling on it, leads to anxiety. We also know that science is designed to predict the future so as to relieve that anxiety. For example, let's say we're going to design a research study, I don't know, to test whether eating a box of laxatives could cause diarrhea. Actually, it's a comforting thought. I mean, not that diarrhea is comforting. That's just a personal preference, judgment-free zone. But knowing what will happen makes us feel better. Knowing that if you take those laxatives, you'll get diarrhea gives us the idea that we know the future. So we believe for that brief moment, the future is under our control, and it alleviates our anxiety. So science, then, is just a tool that we use to quell our anxiety about thinking about the future. Let me say that again a little slower. That's important. Science is just a tool that we use to quell our anxiety about thinking about the future. It gives us the illusion of control over our lives. Now, the point here is not to bash science. Science is a wonderful tool, probably the most valid and reliable tool at our disposal to find meaning to our own existence. It is vital, however, that as we go out and explore our universe, to be aware of our own biological constraints. In this case, the constraint of our own brain. That is, after all, part of being human. Or you can just go forget all this and, um, I don't know, pop a Xanax.